Well, thank you. Um, by way of disclaimers, um, I grew up in Fargo, North Dakota. I don't know if you've been there or seen the movie, but uh, my grandpa was a cattle rancher, his father was a cattle rancher, and as far back as I can trace, everybody raised cattle. My father did not like the cattle business. He left, he went to medical school, spent his life treating diabetes in Fargo, but every day of my life it was roast beef, bake, uh, baked potatoes, and corn. Except for special occasions when it was roast beef, baked potatoes, and peas. Um, but for the second half of my life, I'm trying to make up for lost time. Um, when, I, when we look at evidence uh, to state what everybody knows but is easily forgotten, we start with observational studies. Um, and if we can, we want to do intervention trials to put things to the test. There are times where that doesn't work, but it's often a better kind of evidence. And I do like to subject evidence to systematic reviews so that we're not cherry picking. Okay, with that in mind, uh, we are going mostly in the wrong direction. People talk about sugar and carbs. What people miss is that my family has been very successful at putting meat on America's table. If you look at the rise between 1909 and 2004, you've got a massive increase in meat consumption with tailing off after that time. The big increase, chicken. Americans eat a million chickens per hour. That's healthy food, isn't it? We're in the worst shape we've ever been in. Uh, cheese has gone up uh, with no signs of slowing down, and the average American eats about 30 pounds more cheese every year compared to a century ago. I'm not eating any, so someone's getting 60 pounds. Um, so what do we know, what do we not know, and what would we agree on? What we know about plant-based diets from observational studies is that people following vegetarian and especially vegan diets have healthier body weights, a low risk of type 2 diabetes, healthy blood pressure, uh, low total and LDL cholesterol, and reduced risk of certain cancers compared with the average American. And the data look sort of like this. Uh, Joanne this morning talked about the Adventist Health Study. And I'd just like to put it graphically. The American Diabetes Association published this in 2009. Not quite 61,000 Adventists, um, health conscious, mostly non-smokers, uh, but following different diets, you see a pretty clear trend that if you are a meat eater with a BMI of 28.8 and you were to switch to a semi-vegetarian diet, if, these, if the statistics uh, in general apply to you, you'll lose weight. If you become a fish eater only and throw out the red meat, you're gonna be slimmer. The vegetarians are slimmer still, and the vegans are the only group whose BMI snuggles right into where we would like that average to be. But the reason the ADA published this was because of diabetes. Uh, we see the same gradient, much less diabetes in vegans compared to meat eaters. Um, and if you say, well, but vegans are health conscious, exercising, wealthy, well-educated people, even if you adjust for BMI and, other th and physical activity, they still have a great benefit. Uh, the EPIC trial found much the same thing in a European population. The vegans are the slimmest, the meat eaters are the heaviest, the fish eaters are between the two. And this is EPIC Oxford looking at lipids. The red line is the meat eaters, the tan line are the fish eaters, the blue line at the end is the vegans, and you just see on virtually every measure that you do see the same, a similar kind of, of gradient. Uh, on the right hand side is the ratio of total cholesterol to H. DL, and this is adjusted for BMI, so it's uh, overly conservative. The real numbers are actually more, even more striking. Uh, this is uh, cancer um, rates. This is just overall cancer with considerable differences, and I think a lot of room for more study for sure, but we do seem to see a similar kind of benefit. Uh, regarding intervention trials, I have to say they're often mixed, uh, that we don't just, when I do diabetes trials, I'll use a vegan diet, that is also very low in fat, we don't add fats, and also low glycemic index. Um, so what I'm looking at is not is a vegan diet better, but is this intervention better? Um, and it's also not necessarily a substitution. If you take out the animal fat, what are you eating in place of it? What we find is that if you leave the feta off your cheese, uh, uh, you leave the feta off your salad, sometimes nothing takes its place. And that's important because vegans do eat fewer calories. In the same way as a person who weighs 120 pounds eats a lot fewer calories than a person who weighs 400 pounds. You just do. 
Um, also, it's important to note that many studies use other interventions, like Dean's wonderful work um, in heart patients, where he'll say, it's not just food. Let's get exercising, let's look at our lifestyle, um, and so forth. Um, so that said, what we know is that in intervention trials, plant-based diets will improve body weight, reduce blood pressure, reduce total and LDL cholesterol, they improve glycemic control in people with type 2 diabetes, and incidentally, also in people with type 1. Um, we have anecdotal evidence of that, but you see it very consistently. Um, and uh, this is also a, a tip my hat to Dean's work on prostate cancer, which I think is um, so important and we need mo much more of it. To give you a flavor of this kind of work, this is uh, our uh, NIH-funded trial from 10 years ago on type 2 diabetes showing the reductions in A1C in people with type 2 diabetes following conventional uh, guidance, which is the red line, and uh, a low-fat, low-GI vegan diet, which is the blue line. Uh, huge drop. Um, we sometimes hear people say, I don't know if a vegan diet is good, we really need more evidence, and, and we, we sh I think we should have a lot more evidence. But the body of evidence we have now on what these diets will do is robust. And, to, and I would argue more than sufficient to be able to argue for the healthfulness of this dietary choice. Um, and I'm not going to put any of these on your test, but just so that you know, uh, this is a, pub a study we published last year, or earlier this year in the uh, Journal of the Academy of Nutrition Dietetics on Body Weight. The zero line is at the far right. Every single intervention trial that's ever been done shows that plant-based diet causes weight loss. Uh, this was uh, our study in JAMA Internal Medicine last year on systolic and diastolic blood pressure in intervention trials. Pretty consistent uh, evidence there. Uh, this is the study that just came out, I think, this past month. Uh, on lipids in individuals following vegetarian diets, broadly defined, to, on total cholesterol, quite consistent evidence that they drop, and LDL, same story. Um, w this was a, a study, a meta-analysis of every intervention trial of plant-based diets in type 2 diabetes. And the, the take-home message here is not to focus on the details for now unless you're interested, but rather to note this consistency of benefit um, of this kind of intervention trial in comparison with the average diet that people have been on at baseline. Um, many of these people were following pretty terrible diets, but you put them on a healthy vegetarian uh, or ideally vegan diet, they do well. Okay, so why? Um, vegan diets do lead to a healthier body weight, even if you don't limit calories or limit carbohydrates. And our patients eat more carbohydrate uh, on a vegan diet than they were eating at baseline, and they lose weight quite s substantially. Uh, we have our, our data go out to two and a half years, and the mechanisms are that you're eating, we believe, because you're eating so much fiber and so little fat, the energy density of your diet just falls, and people push away from the table sooner. Um, with regard to lipids, uh, vegetarian diets do reduce total in LDL, and the mechanisms are a reduction in saturated fat and also a reduction, reduction in dietary cholesterol. And just to, to say a word about that, I think the Dietary Guidelines Committee did a wonderful job in almost every area and tackled very difficult issues and wrote brilliantly on sustainability at great length, but they wrote only 60 words on dietary cholesterol that I am not entirely sure that the entire committee read because when you read the literature, in my view, it does not support the, the idea that dietary cholesterol does not affect blood cholesterol levels. I, I think it's an impossible conclusion to arrive at. Um, and what's more, that when people make that assertion, they are talking about people within the context of an omnivorous American diet, in which I think it's true. Little changes up and down in dietary cholesterol have a rather small effect. But if you bring a person into a clinical trial and you put them on a vegan diet, and their cholesterol intake has dropped from 300 to zero, that's a good thing. It's not as big as taking the spam out, but the dietary cholesterol reduction does have an effect. Um, more than that, certain foods have special effects. Soluble fiber, soy, nuts might have a, a lipid improving uh, effect. Um, the effect on triglycerides can be up or down, and here I'm going to put a question mark. I believe that if your glycemic index goes up, I think triglycerides are going to be a problem. But if in addition to a vegan diet, you use low GI foods, uh, the triglycerides should be falling. Uh, this is Dean's work. Um, 
I'm gonna, would like to just list this as something that we know, that uh, the uh, plant-based diet, along with a healthy lifestyle, will have uh, wonderful effects on the cardiovascular system, opening up clogged arteries. Regarding blood, and forgive me, I'm just gonna take a couple more minutes. Regarding blood pressure, we see very uh, important effects on systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Why? Uh, increased potassium, decreased blood viscosity, and over the long run, we see a reduction in body weight. However, blood pressure falls on plant-based diets even when people don't lose weight or before they start to lose weight, okay? Uh, regarding diabetes, uh, vegetarian diets are clearly associated with a marked reduction in diabetes risk, and we think it's mostly because vegans are skinnier. But even when you control for that, you still see an improvement, which I am going to suggest is because of the reduction in insulin resistance, which is probably due to less intracellular fat. Um, regarding people with diabetes, um, we see a whole range of effects. Their A1C gets better, their weight, their lipids get better, they reduce their medication use, and we just published a trial on neuropathy, which for many people gets surprisingly better. And if you want someone to leave your research center in tears, make their neuropathy pain go away, um, which is something that you just don't see with other kinds of diets. Um, we have uh, data out to a year and a half. I don't think you can do a good randomized trial in this world longer than that in type 2 diabetes because medication changes create so much noise the longer the trial goes on. Um, we think that the reason is a reduction in body weight um, and also a reduced intracellular lipid. Um, and let me just finish up with a couple things. Sometimes people will write uh, an article in the paper saying, I think it's okay for your daughter to adopt a vegetarian diet, but be sure she gets all the nutrition. Um, as if somehow an omnivorous diet ensures good nutrition. The opposite is true. If you do an alternative uh, uh, healthy eating index on a person who transitions to even a rather casual vegan diet, they are miles ahead of their omnivorous previous self. Uh, they reduce fat, cholesterol, sodium, they increase fiber, beta carotene, vitamin C and K, magnesium, potassium. Their protein is gonna be adequate, not excessive. It does not require planning for protein. Um, calcium is an issue uh, for everyone. Uh, in my view, I see people low in calcium on omnivorous diets and vegan diets, and I think this makes a case for greens and, greens and beans. Uh, iron is adequate, it tends not to be low, um, but B12 has to be supplemented. Okay, um, regarding acceptability, you will also hear people say, I'm sure it's a great diet, Nobody could follow it, it's extreme. Um, it's important for us to remember that as scientists, you need data. And there are lots of studies, which we have done in heart patients, women with dysmenorrhea, postmenopausal women, uh, individuals with type 2 diabetes. We did a 10-city study with GEICO, and we did studies in kids. And we published specifically on the acceptance of the diet compared with other therapeutic diets. And the data are very strong, that people like spaghetti. And they like pancakes and soy sausage works out okay. This is not difficult, not rocket science. But there are things we don't know. I don't know, when we look at these four food groups of fruits and grains and legumes and vegetables, um, if a person emphasizes fruit, is that better than, say, a Japanese tradition? And I emphasize grain. I don't, I don't know. By the way, incidentally, we sent this, this diagram to the USDA in 2009. Um, suggesting that they replace the pyramid. Uh, we didn't hear back from them. So in, um, in 2011, we filed a lawsuit against the USDA to compel response. And as you know, uh, what came out was remarkably similar to what we sent them. There is no meat group anymore in federal dietary guidelines. And the dairy group, while it's still there, does include soy milk. So we're making progress. Um, we also don't know the value of raw versus cooked. At least I don't know. Is raw better? Um, I cannot tease out the effect of dietary, the, of just getting away from animal products versus the effect of the change in GI, which can be quite significant. And finally, I have, although I tell everyone to supplement B12, uh, certainly vegans, but even omnivores, really. Um, but that said, I've seen a lot of people who don't take that advice and seem to be doing okay. I think it's a very risky thing to do. I think we should. I think everyone should, should supplement, but I've wondered how those people do okay. So the last thing I just want to say is what do I think we might agree on? The first is that vegetables, fruits, legumes, whole grains should really be our primary staples. 
and meat, including fish, dairy products, and eggs, they should be considered optional. If you don't want to have them, that's okay. Um, there are advantages to simple and relatively unprocessed foods, and you need one beverage, and that's water. And these would be things I would offer as things that we might uh, agree on. So thank you for uh, letting me share this time with you.